last we gathered on Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, you had learned about these awakened creatures. You learned about them after rescuing the uh, town of Bremen uh, and the uh, fisher men that had uh, been terrorized by the lake monster of Merit Weldman, as they had lovingly named it, Mary, that had prevented fish from flowing into those uh, far western villages. Uh, you uh, learned from the uh, naturalist there that uh, this sounded just like the moose that's been terrorizing the denizens of Lonelywood. After dealing with Sefik Keltro and his like tracking Torgas around the bend all the way through Tamerlane and risk and freeing the mine from the uh, kobold invaders that seemingly also had been awakened somehow, uh, maybe related, maybe not, you came into the town of Lonelywood where you had already heard about the moose that had been terrorizing the hunters. As you learned, the denizens of Lonelywood mostly got their sustenance through hunting rather than so much fishing. Although they do fish, uh, hunting for game is a major part of their town economy. And without the ability to go out and hunt, well, the poor denizens of uh, this portion of the Icewind Dale were indeed in trouble. You tracked the moose through the woods, encountering uh, banshees of the uh, of the wooden ter- of the uh, of the woods, and in fact, you tracked the moose all the way back to an elven tomb, where you found a moon dial. Discovering the secret of the moon dial when the moon points to various along the dial points to various phases of the moon along the dial, the doors corresponding to those faces open. Nearly suffering defeat to the awakened moose, you chose to explore further into the into the uh, tomb itself. Following along to the uh, a door that had the sigil of the uh, half moon on it, the second tomb of the half moon. The circular chamber had an entrance carved dome ceiling 20 feet high and a beam of light was shining down from the top of the dome illuminating a single rectangular stone sarcophagus someone had turned the tomb into living quarters evident made evident by a rack of drying herbs and an unfurled bedroll behind the sarcophagus a figure then suddenly leapt to the top of this sarcophagus and shouted at you the ten towns will fall whether by my hand or not and moved to strike whether by my hand or the frost maidens and that is where we find ourselves now it's in that cave and I'm going to take you there now as we're going to start off with a bang this time. Oh. I'm going to make sure the turn order here is cleared. This figure has leapt to the top of the sarcophagus and has shouted out a threat. One of you, I think it was uh, Yatara, recognized that the this figure looked similar, but not exactly like the face of the... Uh, woman that you saw uh, in your, like, vision. Uh, the ten towns will be destroyed, if not by my hand, then by the Frost Maidens, and then moves to attack. Everyone, roll initiative. All right. I'm going to click meet Leonard before I roll initiative, so I don't have to get you... Yep. To do my work for me. I thought the same thing. I'm like, click. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be big. Uh, this bad guy rolled pretty good initiative. So we got Ordello, we got two, we got Granite, we got Leonard, I need Yatara. It didn't come through for some uh, 12. 12. It's okay. Sometimes it just doesn't. Boy, you, you guys did take a short rest before making your way into this into this thing, so you're short rested. Really, really, really probably could use your fighter. Yeah. Uh, 
toot. You hear this threat uh, levied. You have been one of the first to enter the room. This figure, I'm going to see if I can show you a picture of what you see. Uh, looks like this. Um, okay. That little shrub thing is in the room. And has leapt to the uh, top of the sarcophagus. And was, Yatara, you were the one that had the, actually, actually, I guess you didn't have the vision. It wasn't in the vision. What it was is the Banshee looked similar. The face of the Banshee, for those of you that stared upon it. Looks similar, but not exactly the same. I think that was it. Either the banshee or in the vision. Does this look alive to me? Uh, roll me. Roll me uh, perception. Or I guess maybe insight. Either perception or insight. Whatever you're better at. Uh, same either way. Uh, it, it's talking and breathing. It seems to be, like. Your immediate recognition is like it said something and it's standing up. Its eyes are open. It looks alive. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I can't do that anyway. I've already used that. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to shoot it with the crossbow. Okay. Um, I like that. The Ten Towns will... The Ten Towns will be destroyed, if not by my hand, then by the Frost Maidens. And Toot's like, kook, when the crossbow bolt. Uh, badly. Uh, and I'm also going to move, because I don't like us all being clumped. So I'm going to, like, move over here. Okay. It's, uh, the, this thing's turn. And... That's probably a good idea, because... It's going to cast a spell. It's going to cast... Uh, blah, 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 blah. What is the distance here? But thick. Uh, okay. Yep. It's going to cast the spell Wind Wall. And what's going to happen is it's going to create this wall of wind that is 50 feet long and I'm going to draw what it's doing as it starts to speak these words that basically are saying ten towns shall fall and the wall of wind is going to go like this and I'm pretty sure that's going to be less than 50 feet total we'll see 20, 25 there, and can we get it around the corner? We can't get Granite Guts. All right, Granite Guts, you escape. Actually, would it go after Toot or would it go after... It would probably ignore Toot then, that's what it would do. It would go after Granite Guts and not Toot, so it would be shifted. So instead of getting Toot, because it's not quite far enough, it would go Wind Wall like that blocking the entrance there. So uh, that's Granite Guts, Leonard, and Ordella as Windwall has been cast. All of you need to make a... Strength save, please. Oh, that's what I'm good at. Uh, Cadillac Granite Guts, you save against this. Uh, you're the only one that saves. Ordella and Leonard fail. Ordella and Leonard, you each take uh, 15 bludgeoning damage. And Granite Guts, you're going to take 7. Darn. And, and the wall of wind is like persisting there. It's blowing, like just wrapping around you. Uh, you know, uh, it's like hard to sort of like you, you get the figure that, like, you couldn't throw anything or, like, toss a spear through this wind or anything like that. 
no shooting an arrow through it or anything like that. It's uh, it's like 15 feet high and a foot thick. What does it mean to move through it? Uh, small or sm small or smaller flying creatures or objects can't pass through the wall. Loose white, lightweight materials fly upwards. Arrows, bolts, and other ordinary projectiles launch the targets are deflected and automatically miss. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Creatures in gaseous form can't pass through. You could you could push your way through it. Okay, so there's no there's no impediment to a character. I would say that it's probably like difficult terrain, but like you could push your way through it. Okay. You're just not gonna be able to like stand out in the hallway and fling things. There's like a wall of wind blocking it. Uh, Yatara, you're up. This would also make targeting from a distance challenging. Challenging. Yeah. Um, Arrows, bolts, and other projectiles launched to targets behind the wall are deflected upward and automatically miss. Ow. I mean, does a magic missile count? Uh, a magic missile, magic missile probably wouldn't count. You you should be able to fire magic missile from where you're at. Um, yeah. I'm just going to do that. Okay. So I cast second level. Oh, I should check to see are those coming through. Yeah. Okay. That is fifteen damage. You should. You're probably running low on spell slots. I know by now. Yes. Uh, so and I got one left. Guitar, I know, has got to be running low, but that those hit and do pretty good damage. Yeah, magic missile can make it through this uh, because it uh, just sort of auto auto hits, and it is a magical bolt. Leonard. All right, Leonard. You are in the Long hail of wind. Yeah, Leonard. I'm going to push through to over here, just trying to spread out. Because I feel like probably not the only area impact spell this creature has. Wise, wise, wise. And then I'm going to cast Catapult. Okay. Catapult is a deck save. Mm -hmm. DC 13. Okay. This creature rolls a uh, 11. All right. Nine bludgeoning damage. Okay. As you hit it, uh, okay. No, I can't do that. Or Della, you're up. All right. Am I able to push forward, or is it? Yep. Okay. You can push. You can push forward through it to get out of the wind. Okay. How far do I have to go to get out of the wind? Does it? Yeah, uh, just like a square. Yeah. Or? Yeah, like a square. Okay, and then I'm going to, I guess, toss some my javelins at her. Let's see. Sixteen. Hits. Yay. For seven. Okay. Cadillac Granite Guts. Okay. Um, I am going to run behind our foe here. Mm hmm And then I am going to... Uh, cast. Hmm. 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 I'm going to put, cast protection from evil and good on myself. Okay. Um. Which should, um, if this is undead, make it have to roll with disadvantage on attacks against me. Okay. 
All right. You pushed through out of the wind and have come around behind it. And yeah. Toot. You're up. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'll look at it and say, if any of you know how to fix broken hinges, my door is always open as I cast Shatter on it. Ooh, okay. uh, and it would be a con saving throw. Okay. It, roll, <laughs> it rolls a nine. Achi machi. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and I should be able to center that so I don't hit anybody else. I just want to hit it. Just want to hit it. Yep. Okay. Uh, and is the wind wall concentration? Uh, the wind wall is concentration, but it doesn't really matter because they have dropped it anyways. Okay. Uh, they dropped the wind wall as everybody pushed through it, and it's their turn. And uh, she looks at all of you that have entered the room and says, says, raises her hands and says come to me come to me destroy them all and out of the ether appearing around you are two three four five six seven as she appears to have conjured eight wolves. And they're going to attack you. Against oh. Cadillac, against Cadillac Granite Guts, we've got two wolves on you. We got so, a 23 to hit, and we so, got a 7 and an 8 so, to hit. So what exactly are these creatures? Are they like are they proper wolves, or are they elementals, uh, or what are they? They are wolves. They they look like almost like uh, fayish wolves. Like they're, they're solid, but they're like magically conjured. Okay, so my protection from evil and good basically defends me from aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. And these don't okay. feel like they are natural. Uh, since the, the spell conjure animals doesn't make them be that, but I'm going to give it to you. Okay. So that makes them have, gives you a, what, is it, what does it do? Give, makes them disadvantage? Uh, yes, they have disadvantage. All right, so then we've got a 12 and a an 7 to hit. Or, uh, I'm sorry, it would just be regular, it would just be regular old, uh, regular old straight up rolling because they have advantage with pack tactics. Aha. So they're not going to get their advantage. So we got a 23 and a 7. Uh, 23 hits. All right, that is six piercing damage and make a strength save. Okay. Uh, how much damage was that again? Six. Six. Okay. And then uh, that was a strength save. Yes, sir. You're up. Uh, attacks against Toot. We've got a crit and we got a 7. Toot, 14 piercing. And make a strength save. Ooh, toot, you're way up. Tax against Leonard. We got a 15 and an 18. Um, yeah. That's 15 total. Make a couple, right. make, make two strength saves. One, two, still up. Ordella. We got a 21 and a 23 for 12 total and make two strength saves. Up, up. Uh, you're up for all of them. Everybody manages to stay up as you have wolves bearing down their teeth upon you. Yatara, you staying out in the hall are spared from the spectral wolves that have appeared in the room as this creature is sort of laughing <laughs> maniacally at you. Jeff, uh, Conjure Animals is a concentration spell, correct? It is. It oh, is indeed. And Yatara does notice that there is concentration being held. 
goodness. Um... Which is why, as a bonus action, this creature's going <laughs> Actually, yeah, she can do that. Um. <laughs> As a bonus... No, I'm not going to do that. Boy, that'd be really mean. As a bonus action, she shape changes into an owl and flies up to the roof. Oh, she circled the moon. She can do that, right? Indeed. You know that's probably how she would play it. Uh, in, but no, she's she's in it for the she's in it for the doom. So actually, as a bonus action, she becomes a uh, a wolf herself, and Yatara is up. I'm still gonna. Hide in the hallway. This is my last magic missile, though. I'm going to hit her with one more magic missile. Okay. That's four darts. Do them one at a time for me. All right, that's four. All right, hang on. Because this matters. Oh, no. Okay. Four, five, six. All right, go ahead and roll them all. Seven, eight. All right, that is enough to drop her wolf, and she reappears as a uh, humanoid woman before you, as the wolf is dropped, and one, two, three, four. All right, our con saves are a 12, a 14, a 17. And a critical fail. <laughs> so, all those spectral wolves disappear. Oh, thank God. Before you all, as they were biting at you. Leonard, you're up. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to move. To here. And I'm going to cast Thunder Wave. For three damage. Does that push her back? Uh, if she fails to save, it pushes her back. Uh, she fails to save. All right. And then it pushes her back 10 feet into the waiting arms of, of Kelly Granigus. Am, 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 I, am I caught in the wave too? I should probably not ask, but. Oh, is that an no, area of effect? No, you are. It's 15 feet, and okay. I'm going to move to where that's not relevant. Uh, yeah, Cadillac, uh, this creature comes flying back right on top of you. Uh, what's your reaction to that? Um, okay, so I literally was going to try to do this just as kind of like a goofy, weird thing, but I want to try to wrap her in the, um, in the um, as she stumbles back, like, just grab on the floor right quick and pick up the sleeping bag and try to like just wrap her up in it. Okay, you're gonna make me a grapple check here. Okay. Um it's basically uh, like a contested strength check. So what is so what would so what would that be? Contested strength. Um roll me a strength check. Okay. Alright. Big money, big money. Oh, that's not big money. That's uh, she rolls a fifteen and Shit manages to push you away a little bit and uh you're sort of in like melee range with her right now uh you're holding the sleeping bag but you haven't been able to like tie her up in it okay uh th that's with disadvantage i gave her disadvantage on that roll the rolls were a 16 and a 15. darn it i gave her disadvantage because she was flying back into you that's going to be your turn or della you're up Do we have an Ordella? You're muted or something, Ordella. How about now? Yeah, that's better. Okay, good. Good. I was like, it's not showing on the screen. All right, I'm going to come around here and uh, get my great axe. Okay. 
Oh shit. Okay. Nice. That's About what time. 30. Oh shit. Okay. Wow. Uh you hack a chunk out of her and she like drops down onto the ground. She's not dead. What? But it looks real bad. You find a boss here. We just fought a boss. I'm not the one that walked into a boss room. <laughs> uh, Granite Guts, you had your turn too. You're up. All right. Um... They're looking really bad. Looking bad. I hope so. That was a big, <laughs> big, big hit. Okay. Um... I'm afraid I'm going to miss, honestly. So I'm going to do something even stupider. I'm going to cast sleep in that corner and hope that they have the lowest amount of hit points. And if I put one of my party to sleep, then oops. Oh, no. Lordy mercy. <laughs> I, I don't have faith in my rolling right now. <laughs> All right. Uh, That's as game. you now roll the sleep die. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, that's not what I meant to do. What level are you casting at? Oh, it's just the first level. All right. How many hit points do you have, Ordella? Uh, um, eight. All right. You watch oh, Ordella. You watch five. Ordella fall asleep. <laughs> How many hit points do you have, Granite Guts? I have twenty-eight. Okay. Uh, no one else falls asleep. Mm. Or Ordella passes out. <laughs> right. It's all Doing part. Of the Can I count this as a long rest? <laughs> it lasts it lasts for one minute i'm sorry can i count this as a short rest <laughs> it lasts for one minute i'm gonna roll some hit die during my nap uh this creature as as the person that axed him has just fallen down in front of him uh this creature is going to oh dear cast uh she says uh i hope she thinks i'm dead already <laughs> she says i may says, i may die but all of my creatures will avenge me no and that is a 20 foot oh it's 20 foot radius oh so that's like oh, the whole room oh no yep that's the whole room baby uh, she casts Ice Storm on the whole room. Uh, as a storm of ice surrounds the entire room. This will also include her. I gotta move this. It's basically like to get all of you. I don't know if she can get out of it. Uh, maybe. Is that 20 feet? Let's see if that's 20 feet. About. Uh, okay, she has to choose. Ordella. Or Toot. Toot is the proper threat. So it's going to go Granite Guts, Leonard, and Toot. Ice Storm lands down on top of you all. Uh, you all need to... Uh, a hail of rock hard ice pounds to the ground in a 20 foot radius, 40 foot high cylinder centered on a point within range. Each creature within the cylinder makes a deck save. So three of you, Toot. Granite Guts, Leonard, deck saves, please. Uh, Leonard, you pass. Everyone else, Toot and Granite Guts, you take 14 bludgeoning damage and 5 cold damage. Toot is down. Toot drops unconscious. Uh, 
Leonard, you're going to take half that. Okay. So seven and two. Nine total. All right. Yeah. Tara, you're up. This is not a concentration spell, so this just appears and then the ice storm is gone. Okay, it's gone already? Yeah. It's not concentration, it's just a hail of ice just rained down from the ceiling on top of Granite Guts, Toot, and Leonard and just, just pounded them into the ground and you see Toot doesn't get up. But you're up now, Yatara. Um, I'm gonna cad. Uh, I'm just gonna do magic missile again, but it's only gonna be first level. Okay. Roll those up. Ooh. All right, that's ten, fourteen. Okay. Leonard, you're up. All right, I'm going to, oh, oh, let me think about what I'm going to do. Um, Leonard, in an uncharacteristically unselfish move is going to cast Cure Wounds on Toot for five. Okay. Understanding that Toot has resurrected Leonard from the brink of death. Uh, oh, I don't know, about six times by now. Yeah. So, paying that back. And then I'm, I'm wondering, move, like, here. Sleep is not a concentration spell, is it? It is not concentration. Oh, man. So, Ordella is just... Great uh, nap. Rolling well, some hit dive. Well, you, no, no, no. You're just sleeping. Uh, you'd wake up if somebody slaps you. All it takes is, like, somebody's action to wake you up. But since no one has done that... You're still asleep. Cadillac Granite Guts, you're up. <coughs> I'm awake. <laughs> um, okay. I am going as a let's see, as a bonus action, I am going to cast um cast slap. <laughs> cast um, do, you have, do you have mage hand? Yatara, I slap Yatara. I slap Ordella with my mage hand. Well, I, I want to make no, sure. Actually, this... I do. Whack. Um, okay, so I'm going to, uh, as a bonus action, cast a Divine Favor to give myself okay. an additional D4. Okay. And then um, I am going to, for the first time this whole session, make an attack. Um, okay, Granite Guts says, "What do you say before you attack?" Um, say some something dope. I say, um, "All I'm right, also... I'm done playing around with you, fiend." And then I am going to uh, let's see, what am I going to use? I'm going to use my lance, although it's that's hilariously <laughs> uh, weird for this close quarters. <laughs> it is hilariously weird. It hits. Okay. Uh, the creature has uh, six hit points left, and you did ten damage. So describe to me what happens here as you say, enough of you foul creature. Um, so, let's see. I skewer her sideways, like, through the head, so it just goes in one ear and out the other. Ugh. And Ugh. And as that's happening, the uh, the sort of creature falls down. And she says, sister, I join you. And sort of looks over at all of you and says, my beasts will avenge us. And then falls dead. Can I rush over and shake Ortella awake? Yep, you sure can. 
and vehemently like continue to I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry wake up wake up I'm sorry I'm sorry <laughs> don't come off don't come off <laughs> Yeah, Odella, you're awake. Uh, I got drool run running down my and, face. <laughs> Toots run over and woken you up. He's like, I thought she had less hit points. She looked really bad, but she had 20. 20 was really bad for this boss. Hey, Joe. Hey. Are we locked in this room yet? No. Okay, but if we were locked in this room, it'd be a pretty friggin' sweet place for a long rest, huh? <laughs> I mean, I mean, presumably nothing could get into this room until the half until the the moon dial went around to the next half moon, which That'd would happen probably. Time. Which would happen probably one more time this night, and then you would hope that it would happen again the next night, unless it was overcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, um, hmm, do you want to risk it? No. I'll see you guys in a month or so. Boy. I'm going to step into the room just in case. Yeah. Because yeah. I do not be out here by myself just in case. <laughs> I'm going to loot her corpse. Okay. Uh, you find some good berries, which you think are kind of neat. Uh, you find a, a sickle that is carved out of ice. Uh, it is uh, an ice sickle. Yeah, yeah, it's literally it's literally an ice it's it is literally an icicle. Uh but it is a sickle, like uh shaped like a hook like like gardening implement. But uh as you're touching it, it sort of is beginning to melt in your hands. Uh she never slashed at you with it, but she had like two of them. Uh as you're sort of searching around, you also find Oh, this is neat. Um, okay. Uh, you find an interesting ring. All right. Can I take a look at the shelf that's over here? At the what? The shelf over where I'm standing. Uh, yeah. The shelf. Okay. Uh, there are uh, various like alchemical sort of things, uh, mostly plants and roots and things like that. Um, the um, yeah. Do any of y'all know anything about druids? Mm. My not. my order is is really close to being druidic. Okay. Uh, you figure that she was probably using a spell like Moonbeam to open the door. Um, so yeah. Oh. That's how she would have gotten in and out. Uh, you find uh, like various mushrooms, berries, shrubs, alchemical and some alchemical makings. There are a couple of uh, vials that you recognize as like potions on the uh, shelving. Uh, the ring that you found, Leonard, is sort of weird looking because it has like lot. It's it's like a golden or brass looking ring with lots of like little like um, lots of little like squiggles all over it. Squiggly ring. Mm -hmm. It almost looks like a brain or something. Ooh, I want to start rummaging through stuff too. Yeah, seeing all the organic material, I'll call out to Granite Guts and say, hey, will you come here for a minute? Or something. Yeah, Granite Guts, you go uh, over there. Yeah, sure. I'll just point out all the, like, mushrooms and stuff like that. To uh, Granite Guts, uh, roll me uh, investigation. Okay. Most of it just looks like uh, there are a couple of potions that you think you recognize. Um, like you think one is a potion of healing and uh, you think the other one is a potion of heroism. So you got one potion of healing, one potion of heroism. Um, out of all like the mushrooms and plants and things, there are like things that you could use to make salves and make things for restoration or like make stuff to make 
curses with a little bit. Um, the thing that like stands out the most to you is there is like a weird little uh, satchel um, that has uh, like some scrawlings on it and it has got like a drawstring that could pull it closed and it has what looks like uh like like some sort of like beans or something in it so sort i sort of, like of out of place i sort of just offhandedly uh mention the potions in a very disinterested way and then promptly begin stuffing all the mushrooms and everything into my pouches okay so you're taking the mushrooms everything are you taking like the bean bag and stuff um if uh if, if if toot is not interested in the bag i would very much be interested in having it yeah Toot, are you interested in bags of mushrooms or in a bag of beans <laughs> uh i mean the beans are interesting but i mean if granite got really wants it then that's fine i haven't been Go for what, it. Go ahead what struck you is what struck you as sort of strange granite guts is uh there's only like six beans in the bag. It's sort of weird. Interesting. Very that's kind interesting. Of weird. That's that's kind of weird. Jeff, is the talking mushroom still in here? <laughs> uh, that's in the other game. Oh no, the 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 talking Bit. shrubbery. Oh, the little shrub. Yeah, it's sort of hiding in the corner. It's still in there. It seems to be sort of a little animated shrub. It's just kind of hiding in a corner. Are you like going over to the shrub? I'm gonna go over and, and talk to it. <laughs> uh it is uh it's there. Uh what do you say to the shrub? I'm gonna say, "Hey, buddy, uh, do you wanna do you wanna come out?" And I'll put my hand out to it, like gently, peacefully. Uh, the shrubs. I want to read you this line from the text. The shrub speaks common. <laughs> so, this is my imp impression of a shrub that speaks common that you've spoken to, and you say, "Hello, buddy." The shrub goes, "Hello." <laughs> so. What are you doing in here? Radisson woke me up. He, she makes me produce bones to eat. Okay, well she's dead, so you're you're free now. What do you want to do? I, I'm just a shrub. I'd like to be. I'd like to be planted. I want to be okay. a tree. Do you want to like travel with us for a little while till you find a good place you want to be planted and then we'll plant you there? That sounds good. Right, what's your name, shrub? Uh, I, I, I've never had a name. <laughs> I guess it's I guess it's shrub. Me. Do you, would you do me the honor of giving me a name? Uh, yeah. My, my, my name is, is, is my name is Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin. Uh -huh. Kevin. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's either it's either Baby Jeff or uh, Rocksteady. <laughs> oh, I like Rocksteady. I'm just shrub. All right. All right. So Rocksteady the Shrub. Rocksteady uh, the Shrub is joining us until he feels like he finds a place. Yeah, he says, uh, he says, I already liked you guys better than Ravison. She blamed all the people in the town for the death of her sister that she keeps stashed there in the sarcophagus. She blamed them all, decided that they all needed to die. Oh, her sister's in the sarcophagus. Yeah, it kind of looks like her. Scary. Don't open it. Note to self. 
All right, so the first thing Leonard wants to do is open it, uh, but that's the since I'm the one who you. walked us into this trap. Uh, I'm not going to make any decisions to open anything else for a minute. I mean, the scarabs are like dumb. Does, does she have stuff? <laughs> well, probably. I'm shrub. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was born like a week ago. <laughs> yeah, she got some great stuff. Rabison, Rabison went around waking up all kinds of beasts, owlbears, a plesiosaur, a moose, some bears, polar bears, trees, all kinds of things. Bears, and, polar bears, owl bears, trees oh we still got to watch out for. I think there's also a mammoth. That one's check, check. Plesiosaur, check. Scary things. Tyrannosaurus rexes. I'm going home. <laughs> I'm just kidding about that one. I don't, re I don't really know. There was like a big tiger looking thing. Big cats. This big cat. I didn't like the cat because it kept eating at my branches. <laughs> so they smelled like mint. <laughs> kept gnawing at them and chewing on me. <laughs> this is, this is crowd cattle thing. I didn't like those. I don't know why she woke them up. That was just me. <laughs> <laughs> she woke up. She woke up the crowd cat and then it clawed at her. He says, uh, he says, uh, so many beasts. Some of them are never evil, but, but some of them was nice. Some of them was kind of nice. A little bit, at least. Which, which ones were nice? Well, I like the beaver. <laughs> <laughs> there was a couple of foxes. <laughs> That was real cool, the foxes. What did the fox say? <laughs> what did the fox, the fox basically said that uh, it was gonna go hunt some squirrels. But yeah, I'll come with you, can I ride? Yeah, sure. Can you walk? I'm a shrub. <laughs> <laughs> No, shrub, shrub, shrubby can then ride yes, on my shoulder. Yes, you can shoulder. ride. We're gonna get out of here before the door closes because Robinson had cast some sort of spell to open the door, and I don't. Unless one of y'all knows how to do that, I'm already out. <laughs> I mean, there was one time where the door stayed closed for like near a week. We yeah. would have, we would have. But here's the good news: since you're all so nice, I won't let you starve to death. I make berries for you. Yay. Yay. One of, one of y'all could cast sunlight though for me, right? You uh, you could do that. <laughs> Very and, generous of you, little shrub. <laughs> and you could cast water too, right? Water. I'm, I do need water. We, we can probably make the water happen. All right. Let's go. And uh, it allows you to pick some of the tasty berries. Yeah. They are basically a good berry. Oh, that's awesome. What's a good berry? Restores one HP. Mm. You eat it. Oh. So think about it like a uh, he has uh, four good berries on him right now. Think about it as like a shove it into someone's mouth and it's like a one HP lay on hands. Okay. Could I just keep a good berry in my mouth and then when I fall unconscious? Like a, like, a, like, like a cyanide pill? Like, <laughs> like right, an inverted right. cyanide pill. <laughs> right. Like you choke on it? Like a reverse cyanide pill. When you pass pill. out? You know what? This Is it just like something up for your airway? The, sh the, shrub, the shrub comes over to you and pats you on the shoulder and says, I think you'd probably need an artificer to fit it like into a tooth or something. <laughs> so, good All right. luck, so good luck with that. All right. It took some sort of like magical infusion or something to make such a thing. Leonard has a project. 
Goals. Goals. All right. You you have a shrub friend. His and, name is uh, either Meatwad or Rocksteady. Oh, I like I like the name Meatwad. Oh my lord, help me! Oh, yeah, the shrub's name's Meatwad. All right, Meatwad. <laughs> All right. All I'm right, sorry that my shr- I'm sorry that my shrub turned into Meatwad. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard right, is, is there... leaving. The Highlander room. is a Highlander was a documentary that existed in real time. Only That's such oh, a good show. God, now I'm going to have to make you guys encounter Master Shake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh my God, he's going to have to come down from a spaceship as a talking giant talking milkshake. All right. What are you guys up to? What are y'all doing? So I am not, as much as I want to, I'm not opening the sarcophagus without encouragement. So Yeah, uh, M- uh, Meatwad the Shrub told you uh, that that's where Ravison kept the body of his sister that was killed. And uh, she blamed the uh, Ten Towners for her death. And uh, some of you that saw the Banshee-like creature recognized that this looks very similar to uh, very similar to uh, the the creature you just killed. We have a drawing of an alien, I think. Hey, so I'm going to leave the room, but is there a book on the sarcophagus? Uh, Yeah, there is a book. Um, I'm going to take it. As I leave the room, I don't want to inspect it while I'm in the room because I'm afraid that the door is going to close. Okay. Yeah. You grab the book and ski daddle. Yeah, I'll follow. Um, I have a question. As we walk, I have a question for Plant Wad. Shrub Wad. Um, so I, sh- I, I, I show it the uh, beans and I say, um, uh, Shrub Friend. Do you recognize uh-huh. these? The shrub looks over and goes, they look like beans. They are. Um, we found them in the room. Uh, did you did you see uh did you see her doing anything with these? Do they look familiar to you? Uh no. He says, uh, <laughs> he says she would never touched that kind of thing. It was something that uh there was a no no thing for me. I, I I wasn't gonna touch the no no. I understand. Thank you for your help, plant friend. You're most uh, welcome. Would you like a berry? Um, I would love a berry. And let me give you something in exchange. And I rummage around in my um in my pouches, and I pull out a mortar and pestle for my herbalism kit. And goes, I Ooh! <laughs> and. <laughs> And, and it sort of like shrinks back from you and says, "Don't you smash me?" No, I, 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 I make a little. Um, I, I make a little um, pull this out of some um, out of some moss that I have in my pouches, and then I put it around his roots, and I say, "And here's something for you." Ooh. Well, thank you. It's not dirt, but you know, I do like having the destroyed bodies of my plant brother and <laughs> brother and both in my feet. So, it's like it will make fertilizer, you, like compost. It'll make you grow up big and strong. Is this how it? Your dead how, carcasses in your chest. He, he, he. The plant looks over at you and says, "Is this how your species does it?" <laughs> actually, actually, I look at it. I look at him with a very serious face, and I say, "Death is a part of life, and we all, we, we all are a part of the of the circle of it." And so, it's the, just, it's the, le- it's the leaves droop, and it goes. I never thought about it. <laughs> then it goes, I'm going to die some days. Probably soon. Oh, so. into water use. <laughs> <laughs> Go look at my yard. And it goes it goes over and like looks at itself and looks at it, holds up two little sticks and looks at its leaves and goes, I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> and it's her. The, the, and the little, the little shrubs sort of runs off having an existential crisis. <laughs> Maybe, maybe we Look need to 
we're done. Maybe we need to keep the Sylvanus Fall away from the shrub. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> the shrub's the, not leaving. The, the, the shrub's, shrub. the shrub's yeah, not leaving. The, leave, the shrub's, the shrub is not. The shrub is not leaving you. It's just sort of like moved <laughs> over now. It's just sort of like looking at its leaves, going. That's this part of life. That's this part of life. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> And you all are, have exited the room <laughs> and uh, made your way back into the room with the giant white moose corpse there that you have skinned. And the shrub looks over and goes, <laughs> They're killers! You all are killers! It wasn't us. No, it was like that when we found it. <laughs> okay. Well, that close. Uh, we've still got so. There's the other half moon door. Yes. And then there's, there's also the, the mirror. Mirror. Yeah. Yes. It was, I, I, I did. I did see that exchange. And try to go down between Meatwad and Crack and Cadillac about the uh -huh. beans, and ask Cadillac if he wants me to um, inspect his beans for him to identify them. Uh, sure. I, 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 I present you with a handful of beans. <laughs> uh, do you, are you able to cast identify? Yeah. All right. All right. You cast identify as a ritual or as a, uh, okay. just like, um, are you using a spell as, slot? Um, as a ritual. Okay. So it takes you, you do a 10 minute dance while everybody is sort of gathering themselves and whatever ritual you do, you cast the spell identify and you identify that this is indeed a bag of beans but with your identification you can identify that these are indeed magical beans so the correct action would not be to dump all of the beans out at once to see what they are <laughs> i t my fear was hawkins scabs a bag of beans is like i pour them all out onto the ground at once to see what they are uh, these are like Jack and the Beanstalk beans. Uh, they have a magical effect that happens when you remove a bean from the bag and plant it in dirt or sand and water it. Does, it, does, it, to... does it have to be soil? No. Dirt or sand and then water it. Just as long as it goes on organic material. Yes, and then water it, an effect happens. The effect is random. You roll it a D100 and then something happens. Something can be really good, really bad, or really crazy. Mm. Magical effects happen. Strange, what Yatara knows is strange and sometimes dangerous and sometimes powerful magical effects can happen if you plant and water these beans. Like a giant beanstalk could appear to a cloud giant's castle where they scale down and smash your heads in with their giant cloud giant hammers. And then grind your bones to make their bread. But there could also be a goose. There could be. New pets? There, or there could be a hungry boodlette shows up, burrows up from the ground, and attacks you. Mm -hmm. It does 30 damage per round. Good luck. Hmm. Yeah. So that's what you find. This might be useful. Like, potentially, you could, like, planted and have a really bad monster appear like next to a bad guy or something or like a really good thing could happen like or feed it to the ice maiden yeah I suspect that a god would not eat the bag of beans unless you Alas. you did put a door in a dragon so yeah no I'm I'm thinking <laughs> six magic beans force fed into a goddess yeah, I won't lie. That a hundred percent was a thought that occurred to me. <laughs> yeah, but this says you have to bury it in dirt, plant it in dirt, and then water it. That's the reason I asked about whether dirt was 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 necessary or just if it organic says, ma organic it, material would work. It says dirt or sand. Okay, so we have to force feed we, the entity dirt too. No, so you just put the dirt in the bag oh, with so you the make beans. Like dirt meatball. Thing. So then you, so then you planted them all, and you if any water, gets 
<laughs> if, any water, if any water gets onto your bag at all, all of a sudden, a lot of crazy shit happens <laughs> in Granite Guts's pocket. Mm-hmm. This such, sounds like an once. excellent plan. Such as a 60 foot square tall pyramid appears <laughs> on top of him. On top of Granite Guts. It's the ultimate dead man switch. Yeah. Don't get wet and don't feed him after midnight. Mm. Yeah, that's your cyanide pill. Put it in a little dirt and then shove it in your mouth. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. It has to be in the ground. You have to plant it in the ground. We're not playing Calvin Ball with the, I'm going to let you kill a god by shoving a bag of beans into its mouth. I mean, I might do that if you came up with a very clever way to do it. Dirt and water have to be involved. Yes. You just carry around a potted plant. It's fine. Dirt, water, and planting have to be involved. All right. So you're you found out that it is a bag, a magical bag of beans. Uh, as you're there, sort of staring there, the door behind you closes. The half moon door closes, and the uh, light on the mirror lights up. All right, we can get the answer to seven questions with this one or something like that. Who wants yes. to? Yes, I heard it was infinite questions, right? You can I just ask it. it. Infinite questions. You could just ask it infinite questions and it will just gaze upon your own face and have seven questions answered. Is what you heard or what you read. All right. Anybody want to ask the questions? I'll ask the questions. The light is shining upon that mirror. All right. I'll walk up to the mirror. Mm -hmm. And I'll gaze upon my reflection. And you're surrounded by sort of a magical light in your reflection. Okay. I'm going to say, how do we end the winter? Um, the mirror sort of shines and roll me insight really quickly uh, insight, insight, insight and what do you what'd you get because I'm 13 something. 13 uh, you have the strong like beckoning sense to touch the mirror I'll touch the mirror. As you touch the mirror, you find yourself not where you were. Uh, You find yourself, as you ask, how do I end the winter? Uh, You find, you see the rugged glacier. The large, big glacier that is sort of in the distance behind uh, behind the mountain. And you see the glacier split and crack and open and you find yourself flying through the glacier and you're deep 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 underground traveling through tunnels of ice and through uh like miles of like what looked like maybe like lava tunnels out of ice until you see it something you've never seen before. There are spires made out of strange metals, strange minerals, strange amalgams in almost inhuman design, but definitely designed by some intelligence. It becomes clear to you that it is. You're seeing some sort of civilization, maybe, but it's almost like inhuman. And then at the deep center, there's a pulsing, strong pulsing. And you see a uh, 
luminous, like glowing almost as bright as the sun, 50 foot diameter crystal sphere that is sitting on some sort of ornate looking stand. And it pulses a bright light at you, which flashes in your eyes and you, you, you're sort of back before the mirror. And you don't, I don't know that you know what any of that means. There's a crack in the world and then some sort of strange geometries and then a pulsing orb. Uh, so I, I know that this curse has been placed upon the land by Aureal. Are you asking that? No, no I, I'm confirming that i do know that because because my next question that's what that's what the locals believe what you know is that's what the locals believe okay uh i'm gonna ask and them. that's what this druid says i'm gonna ask them what is Ariel's weakness hmm uh you see a uh as you sort of ask that you touch the mirror again mm -hmm. and you vanish you're not where you were before you see a island i think it's an island and it is, appears to be in the shape of a skull rather than like a uh, normal looking island, surrounded by glaciers, surrounded by icebergs and uh, floating ice. Maybe it's an island, maybe it's not. You're not certain. You're not even certain if you're like on earth, uh, but it is cold and skull-like. And you see a beast there that appears to be standing on two legs and has what looks like the face of an owl and eyes are piercing and then you have you sort of travel through the piercing eyes and you see the face of a woman standing there but she looks dead she is frozen and her skin is cold and her eyes where eyes should be are just pure deep cold blue the coldest blue you've ever seen before and you pass through those cold blue eyes and this woman's body that is completely encased in ice and inside there you see a single solitary crystal that has a white star-like light shining in the center of the crystal it looks like a teardrop and it is made out of this blue ice-like material and uh as you sort of rocket back through all of these forms that you uh they all sort of like rush and doll into each other and you see a tome there's some sort of like tome in a book but you can't make out what is on the book or what the book says or the title of the book and then you find yourself back before the mirror okay uh for my next question Who can help us end this curse? Yeah. As you uh, as you touch the jar, you see the face of a. You see yourself, but then you sort of trans are transported. You find yourself in another place, and there is what looks like a uh, woman there. I want to make sure that I'm telling you, describing her properly. So, one moment. There is a woman that's there. And uh, she appears to be wearing the uh, garb of like a wizard. Something of the like. Um, she's poring over tomes and poring over books. And what looks like a rock encased tome like a tomb 
almost like a like completely walls are totally covered in rocks. And let me let me just double check her race really quick, okay? I don't want to tell you wrong here. So you're sort of getting information here that is helpful to you. Um so apologies. Too much information in the books. Uh, yeah, you see this woman. She's in a rock and or like a stone room, like stone walls, and uh, she is. Oh, ah, there we go. She is a white tiefling, and she sort of meets gaze with you. And uh, as you sort of meet her gaze. She snaps the book closed, looks at you, and says, get out. And you're snapped back to where you were. Okay. She is a albino tiefling. I thought she was tiefling. She said to be sure. All right, I am I'm running out of questions. So my, my next question and the last one I have right now is... Where should we go from here? Hmm. I think that you'll have to be a little more specific. I think it depends on what your aims are. Yeah, I was hoping it might intuit my aims um, from from like to in order to uh, in order to solve the mystery. Where well, should you go now? So we're okay, I'm 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 just gonna give it to you. This is this is what you this is what you get from where should we go now? Okay. You touch the mirror and you find yourself in a different place. You fly over lake and over land and find yourself in a city again. Um and then you find yourself in a uh, tavern. And uh, inside of the tavern, it is uh, somewhat familiar looking uh, because you recognize that you've been there before. And you recognize that it is, in fact, where you started. It was a tavern that Toot took up residence in and was able to become the bard of the local tavern the jokester of the local tavern in the city of East Haven and that disappears and then you see yourself out in the wilderness and you're standing on top of a rocky crag high above all of the other land and the snow is just blowing around you and it is terribly ice cold and you see what looks like the body of a tiefling woman, red skin, that is clutching her knees and seems to be entirely frozen solid. And then you see another scene. And you see the scene of a uh, gnome uh, that is in a room, an empty room, and he is like turning a screwdriver onto some sort of thing. You can't make out what it is, but you can hear him sort of muttering, almost got it. Just a little further. And um, then you find yourself in a, another place. You find yourself inside of a uh, town at the bottom of a giant ravine. There is a large stone castle that you've never seen before at the top of it with what looks like uh, some sort of birds flying around the castle, picking up uh, carrion from it. Uh, and it has quite an ill foreboding look to it. Stone castle. And then you are zipped back to where you are now. Okay. I'm going to take a break from the mirror. I'm going to go back to everybody and info dump and tell them the things that I saw and see if we have 
more questions. Other stuff I thought about but didn't know if it was particularly relevant to ask was, is there a way to reverse the, the transformation of the animals or, um, yeah, that's as far as I got. But in, any other stuff that, that might be helpful to know? How many more the questions were left? I think I got three more. The three shrub more. walk. The shrub walks over to the mirror and puts his little paw and goes. <laughs> and then sort of waddles back. Two more. <laughs> <laughs> the shrub comes over to you all and goes. I know the bus for the bot. Let's throw the words, y'all. All right. Well, the scrub, the, the scrub, Meatwad answered the question, can other people ask? So if anybody else wants the remaining two questions, by all means, feel free. Um, I'm going to go up to the mirror yep. and you see yourself bathed in magical light. And... Um... I ask, um, can the plants and creatures that have been awoken be restored or are they permanently changed? You touch the mirror and you see the face of Ravison, this horrible frost druid looking woman casting this magical spell upon a wolf and the wolf sort of it's like a large dire wolf like thing that has grown and its eyes turn cold blue and it starts to growl and the druid looks over at the wolf and says you are servant of Ariel now if you wish to remain as you are you will serve her wisely, serve her faithfully. And uh, she then says, go forth, kill the Ten Downers. They've stolen your lands, built their homes, chopped down your forests, take your hunt, kill them, take back what is yours, what Ariel has promised you. And the wolf sort of looks at her and says, Yes, I will do her bidding. Thank you. And um, that scene changes. And you then see, uh, describe your understanding of Sylvanas to me. Because that's what you see an image of. Um, not what? like, not like so, the Sylvan face of... Sylvanas is Sylvanas is like is 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 nature, but like wild, chaotic, like you know, swamp, would, swamp decay. How would like it appear to unbridled growth nature? Okay, so how would it appear to Granite Guts in Granite Guts's mind if like a if like the um, embodiment of Sylvanas were to appear before Granite Guts? What would that be like to him? Um. Like he knew this was a emissary or like a the like physical embodiment of so, the light of Sylvanas. Um, um, one wizard in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> what I would you say? Same. Um, <laughs> Radagast. Yeah. A little bit, a little, a little bit like Radagast, only without the sense of humor. Probably. Would it be um, a humanoid creature? Like. He would probably yes. He would probably be a humanoid creature. Yeah. Like so, you see, like an old wizened man wearing uh, brown robes, maybe carrying a staff of wood who is walking through nature and as he sort of extends his hand plants grow and they grow up and then immediately like die and decay behind him like the entire cycle of life appears mm -hmm. like from growth to birth to death to decay like immediately as he waves his hand and uh, 
He looks over at you and says, you have stopped the unnatural progression. The gift of death may be all that is there to offer, but these beasts may be able to be restored. I grant you that ability. And you have the ability to cast Lesser, lesser Restoration if you don't already have it. Um, is the vision over? Uh, yes, the vision ends. I literally stumble back and just sort of collapse on the floor. And um, when I regain somewhat my composure, um, I wander back to the group and I literally sort of like am sniffling a little bit because I just literally, you know, uh, had an encounter with 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 the God that I serve. And um, I that this has been a very big moment for me. Yeah, so it's not necessarily going to work like you think it may, but uh, interesting. But uh, basically, he said there may be able to be some restoration, and it's I grant you that ability, so you will have some ability. So this is going to work like the ability to cast lesser restoration. Okay. But he also has told you that death may be the only gift that you can give, mm -hmm. or some. Uh, I should add in, he would say something along the lines of, it depends on how far gone they are. For some, perhaps. For others, death may be the only gift you have to offer. And that's over. You have one more question. All right, we have one more question. Who wants it? What are your spellcasting abilities, Granite Guts? What are your slots and things like that? Um, let's see. I have uh, four slots. If I remember. No, three slots. And um, I currently have one, two, three, four spells. Um, Actually, you know, I, activated. I like this better. Um, yeah you you have basically limited use of the spell i'll tell you how it works later okay okay you're not gonna have like infinite use of it you've been granted the ability to do this but it's uh but yeah we'll 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 workshop how this is gonna work okay does anyone else have a question The light is beginning to fade towards the mirror as if the moon is passing. I mean, I'll come up with another question. So looks like the nobody, time is looks like the five, time is short. Four, three, two. Okay. I'm gonna run back to the mirror. Leonard runs back to the mirror. One more, <laughs> one more thing. Where can we find some cool stuff to help us kill this bitch? <laughs> You ask, where can we find the co some cool stuff? You touch the mirror, and you are flying high above the Ten Towns. You're flying high above the mountain. You pass over top of the mountain. You, As you're passing over top of the giant volcanic or dormant volcanic peak, you see something glint at the very tip of the peak. Uh of the mountain and then you pass over it above the glacier and all of a sudden you there's a crevasse in the glacier in the middle of the glacier and you descend deep 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 underground and you find yourself again standing in a strange almost alien environment with again sort of what looks like a giant glowing piercing orb um yeah and then then you're you're back so was that the same place from earlier the underground city area when you asked how to defeat a real mm -hmm. that you were sort of like saw a vision of like an underground alien sort of thing mm -hmm. or alien alien to you kind of thing yeah right. looks similar looks similar 
foreign, strange looking thing. The interesting that you saw no people or no creatures. Hmm. Frozen in ice. And uh, I think this is probably a decent place to leave it off for the night. Here's the news that none of you get to tell Cantrell. Uh oh. And we'll find out if he watches the YouTube or not. <laughs> <laughs> You've all leveled up. Yay! Yay! Oh, nice. Yay! I need it. Everybody except Cantrell. <laughs> Everybody except Cantrell. Well, you know, technically he hasn't earned the XP from the last couple of sessions, so this is yeah. a little reasonable. He actually, He's gonna be he, actually, he actually has not earned the level up yet, but you guys oh. are now level. You guys are all level five. Awesome. I hope you guys had a good time tonight. I thought that was yes. pretty cool. You got some cool info. Uh, and we didn't die. You didn't die. You managed yeah. to beat the you managed to beat the druid, boss. Some of us were asleep during the battle. That's true. Sorry. <laughs> hey, she crit. That was a big listen. If yeah, it weren't for that cr- if, it weren't, <laughs> if it weren't for that great axe crit, that might have turned out very differently, because Toot mm-hmm. died. I deserved it though. That, that was turned risky up. and it yeah. It might have turned out very, very differently. Uh yeah. That was great. I hope that the information that you guys were given by the mirror has sparked some interest. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, night everyone. <laughs>